All right, welcome back, everyone. And um, good to have you still here. So quickly, we'll be moving on to the next session. And um, this session is going to be um, handled by Matas. But quickly, before Matas comes to discuss about multi product governance, and then he's going to also share us about an overview of what's going behind the scene. Um, Matthias is the product architect at Drop Solid and is also responsible for the technical roadmap of Drop Solid Experience Cloud products. And I'm um, also is a DevOps engineer, um, where you can deep dive into more technical challenges, problem, and feature. Matthias has also been an active open source world for the past 12 years. And uh, mainly, he has been contributing to Drupal and Civil CRM. But more recently, he's now been part of the Multi community. And I can also say that he is the product lead for Multi. So Matthias is going to be sharing more with us about what does it looks like for the Multi product. Hi, Matthias. Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. Good to have you. So the floor is yours. Please take over. Yes. All right. Let's go. I will share my screen. So, like uh, what Ruby explained, I will indeed uh, uh, say something about uh, Motic product governance and uh, give an overview under the hood. Um, and uh, I'm already uh, uh, introduced. So, indeed, I'm Matthias. Uh, there is some update about uh, the, the introduction. So, I a few years later, and uh, now I'm the director of engineering at Robsolid, and indeed a uh, product team lead in the, uh, Mo uh, the for the Motec uh, project. And uh, you will hear that uh, through the whole presentation. I have an urge to automate everything. I, I'm a real fan of automation and, and to ensure that everything goes smooth. So that's basically me. I'm a technical person. Um, also, going to introduce quickly who Robsolid is. It will only take 30 seconds or something like that. So, uh, so Drop Solid is an experience cloud, uh, is a product company uh, making the experience cloud, which uh, gives, uh, which offers you the, the capabilities of hosting and, and producing uh, digital experiences. So it exists for around 10 years. It has a lot of people working for it uh, uh, around the globe. And we have like really cool and really big companies that uh, trust our products and use it uh, from day in, day out. And what is actually our open exp uh, digital experience platform? It's the combination of content management, marketing automation, and the uh, CDP, custom data platform. And of course, the marketing automation platform uh, that we use is, uh, is uh, Motic. And so we, we aim to be the most open DXP with a low barrier to entry. And at this point, on that product, uh, we have um, less, uh, more or less 10 people involved in the Motic ecosystem. That's, that goes from uh, development to training people to be involved in the whole uh, flow and so on. And we try to uh, have a weekly focus on contributing in any way to the Motic project, being technical or being QA or yeah, doesn't really matter, but ensure that in the company there is an awareness of the Motic project. Um, we host our own uh, Motic product based on uh, the, the Motic recommender project, and it's fully automated and it's composer based. So that's really cool. And that will also flow through the presentation. And we manage a lot of projects, small, big, external, internal, doesn't really matter. It's we we know uh, we know how to host Motic and to, to manage Motic. So that's quickly about Drop Salt. So what do I want to talk about actually today? Um, this is basically the agenda. Uh, I want to quickly go over the history of Motic. Uh, you may think why why go over the history? You will see it in a bit. And then also talk about why I think automation for Motic is so needed and how how that's helps us in linking everything together. Um, what are the missing links between the, the different uh, repositories and flows that are right now? How do we handle release management? Um, what are the challenges uh, and the, the future steps we need to do? And how you can help, actually, how you yourself can help in, in moving it forward. Um, I also want to emphasize this is a technical presentation. So I am a very technical person. I'm not at all. I don't use Motic as a, as a marketeer or as a and to manage campaigns and so on. That's not what I do. And also, I uh, I want to emphasize that some on some slides will, you see the little blue hat, um, because that's my personal opinion. I want to be sure that it's that it's clear what 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 my opinion is, my vision is on something, and not per se what is agreed upon uh, within the community. So, let's go about the history I want to talk about. So I ran some 
numbers I can share the the, the command I used or the, the GitHub API endpoint you can use. Uh, but actually, the Motic repo was created a long time ago. So basically, we can uh, mid August we can actually celebrate that the creation of the repo. But then it took some time for before the first commit was there. Uh, and then all the repos also emerged in the in the full uh, ecosystem, being the documentation repo, the website repo, the API library repo also. And then also, and I was uh, actually astonished about that, the Docker Motic repo already exists since 2015. And that's really, really curious. It was, uh, I was really <laughs> astonished that I saw it. It's really cool. So basically, this is how Motic started. What I want to focus on also is what actually happened around automation and linking things together. So. The first step in automation was done in, in, in uh, mid-2016 when uh, Travis was added to uh, to the suite of, of, uh, of Motic, which allowed, uh, allowed to automate tests to release and so on. Uh, that I can't see the full history of that because that's or the full what happened uh, because it was in Travis and not in GitHub. But then in 2020, uh, there was a switch to GitHub Actions. And from there on, a lot of things uh, start moving uh, for further on the the the, the, the concept of of, uh, of automation so then one of the things that also happened was running a daily test and running a daily test on motic to see if not something would break that was missed during uh during uh, the uh, merging a branch uh, or sorry merging a pr and or a code change into motic or for example that an external thing changed for example php that P the minor version of P php would suddenly break uh motic which is really interesting to know, and it's really something you want to know as a uh, when you maintain a, a product. Another thing also that happened as a really uh, cool change that I that uh, we as Drop Solid uh, also helped with was the split uh, of the Motic mono repo into sub repos. For some context, I did a presentation about that uh, last year, about the whole uh, compo composerization of Motic. This is, in my opinion, also really needed feature that suddenly emerged in Motic land and then ensure that you had other options than using the, 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 the downloadable tarball release uh, to install Motic. And that also had a big impact on the automation because, for example, and I don't have a screenshot here, but there are like, I think, out of my head, 40 repos that need to have uh, code pushed to it every every time something is merged into into the, the, the main branch or the Firebase branch. So you definitely want to automate that. So that happened in November 21. And then since then, a lot of other things happened to improve CI runs, both for speed, both for uh, ensuring um, that issues that, in, that that were encountered that actually had a test to prevent that. And I don't mean in like a code-wise test, but like in the uh, in the full ecosystem, that for example, uh, your uh, your code test tests uh, can be green, but there can be, for example, a change in a specific file that should not happen. Or for example. Uh, due to a change, you can't install uh, Motic via Composer. And that those are those changes that happened afterwards to ensure that the quality that uh, comes out of the repo that's in the repo is actually uh, good. So that's what happened. And then some other things. So at this point, you may or may not know, but Motic is not the only repo in the Motic organization. There are actually 105. Some of them are private for specific reasons. There are actually a lot of teams working on those repos. There are uh, uh, a lot of people linked to Motic, to the Motic uh, uh, organization also. And this is, for example, for non-technical people, this is actually what happens behind the scenes every time you, you actually push a commit. This whole test suite runs. And that's why automation is so important, because then you can you don't have to, nobody has to check it uh, themselves. And there are a lot of uh, extra tests that were added in, uh, along the way to ensure that the stability of the, the outcome is good. And though, also important that it goes fast. You don't want to wait half an hour every time you push something to Motic to see the result of it. Actually, your test will pass. You want to have that fast. Another thing, like I mentioned, the split, of, uh, split up in monorepos, is also something that automatically happens. Nobody has to do that. It's, it's fully automated. And also the release process, that's one of the oldest ones, obviously, to, 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 uh, the, that was added. And this is actually ensuring that we can release that nobody has to do some manual actions. But on that, I will uh, come back uh, later. So this is basically where we are at right now. A lot of automation around it. And that's what I want to uh, to also talk about is automation. Because automation is really, really, really needed. Automation is needed to prevent uh, spending time on tedious tasks. You don't want to. Uh, okay, I have to, uh, like I already explained, I don't want you want don't want to do your manual code checks and to to review things that actually can be automated. 
it's of course it's it makes full sense to all to always do a manual code review and to literally see what changes are there because uh, uh, static code analysis or similar cannot always catch everything but yeah, that's that's really needed. And the other thing is that you can prevent mistakes. Human errors happen, and that's fine. And if you can prevent them, that's even better. And that's why automation is so important. But automation doesn't mean you don't need to understand the process. You still need to have a grip on the process, and it's not because it's automated. You should not know what actually happens. And so you see the blue hat on the on the on the slide. So that's my my opinion. And it has to be fast because if you make something that's not fast at all automated, then people will ignore it or you will lose the momentum. For example, CI tests. If it takes an hour to run your CI tests, it makes no sense. You, yeah, you still have a good test, but people like if you have a, a um, you're on Friday, you focus on, uh, on uh, contributing to the Motic community and you have to wait an hour before your test fine, uh, fine uh, is, is uh, green or, or there is an issue. Yeah, then you lose the momentum that day to move forward fast. And that's why um, me, uh, me personally, I really focus on uh, keeping an, an eye on how fast those tests run and to ensure that improvements are also added to the repo. So like rector, uh, caching of rector tasks, uh, um, uh, yeah, uh, ensuring that like the PHP unit actually use caching. Like for example, I, 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 I added a very, a very small change to ensure that the, the hashing algorithm for passwords was changed to a less uh, less secure one, but at least the test ran faster. And that took, that took like five minutes out of the CI time, purely like that, just by switching something. That's why you it's more important to have them fast, uh, but of course accurate. You need to, they, they have to be reproducibly failing or, or, uh, or passing, but that's, uh, yeah, that's important. And also, in my opinion, automation has to go full circle because having a process 90% automated still leaves the frustration there to do manual tasks, leaves, still leaves the room for error and so on and so on. And of course, there, there is no black and white here. Uh, you, can, you can't always do everything uh, automated, but uh, for sure in the, the Motic uh, uh, product, there is still some uh, uh, room for improvement. And also, you have to have the documentation. You have to have the manual fallbacks described and the knowledge that corresponds a bit with uh, the understanding the process. Uh, so yeah, that's also, in my opinion, key to, to automation. Um, because and that brings us to the what I see as the uh, missing links and, and the under the hood view of the the uh, Motic uh, project. So a little step back. There's a lot of information on the slide, but I will go over them uh, one by one. Um, so uh, uh, up to mid 2020, when the mono repo split up was done, Motic just consisted of one main repo for all the code and all the code changes. There was uh, there was no uh, automation around it to do something else. Let's say, for example, there was no automated link, and that's, at this point, there is still none uh, for the Docker images. So, um, Motic, when it uh, ran tests, it ran, ran the tests on its own code base. But since the code split up, uh, there is no guarantee that it actually, once it's split up, it will actually pass the tests. And that's really important. And you want to also ensure that you test it on all the outcomes uh, uh, that you actually support. So if one of the outcomes is a Docker image, you should actually test the Docker image or find a way how you can test it in a Docker image before you actually release. Because otherwise, if you can prevent that bug up front it's, 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 and it's doable to automate it, it's a really good idea. Um, another thing is also because uh, uh, Docker is not the only uh, possible other outcome than, than downloading the, the, the tarball release. It's the recommended project for the composer flow. Also there, um, there is at this point no automation in ensuring that the recommended project is actually updated. It's a manual tasks. And that's the missing link between those two. There is no bridge between the Docker repo, sorry, the, the Motic mono repo and the recommended project. The same for the Docker images. There is no more build of the Docker image when a PR is merged. You cannot download at this point a Docker image of the 5.x branch. And it's updated automatically after every PR or every hour or every day. That's not so important. Also, there is no Docker uh, automated Docker image release on every every uh, tags release. And then every every now and then, somebody uh, pops, uh, uh, makes a, uh, an issue to say, hey, we don't have that release. How do I, how can I actually update my Motic? Because I'm stuck. I switched to, to Docker because there was a 4.4.6 release. But what, what now? I have no 4.4.6. Uh, seven, eight, or nine. There is n there is none, and the same thing is for the Docker images, and that's really important there. That if some of the uh, requirements 
have a security update or another update, there is no way, no automated way now of doing that. And that's also a missing link because we cannot guarantee the security of the outcome if you don't automate it. Otherwise, somebody actually has to do it manually to click on a button and to actually keep an eye on every security advisory and so on. You can, of course, automate a lot with that with GitHub or GitHub can warn you for that. But uh, even then, it's, uh, it's not ideal. And then lastly, the API library. So at this point, the API, API library is only testing the, the main branch of the repo. So at this point, that's a 5.x branch, which is also not ideal because you want to ensure that if you, if you merge something in the four branch, it actually still works because to be realistic, it's not that once Motic 5 will be released that magically everybody will update at once uh, and every Motic project will be updated in the, in the next weeks. No, that, that that's not, realistically speaking, that probably won't happen. That's with my... Uh, blue hat on as my personal opinion um so yeah but we're actually here we are somehow at a chicken egg problem because we want to be able to automate flows and to ensure that we can test uh test something on like for example the docker images but we have no process to do them and that's really hard and that's that's the that's the, the like the the circle uh me as a person have been running around in the the past few weeks to ensure what what is the, actually the focus we should work on and this is my opinion, we should really focus on getting those Docker images automated because that will help us a lot forward because then we can actually automate the uh, the, uh, the API library tests. We can, uh, we can and that will also ensure that, we'll, uh, ensure that uh, the, the speed of those tests will, will go up and faster. They will be really, really faster because we don't have to install and download Motic anymore. We also can ensure that we have... Um, uh, that we have then the, 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 the release there, but the release there for Docker, uh, that, that somebody can start uh, installing and updating Motic from Docker. But in my opinion, it should focus internally first on test builds to ensure that actually it's usable for use cases that we need the most, because we still can click every every uh, release. We can add it to the manual, manual uh, to the manual of the of, uh, uh, of the releasing of Motic to click on a, on a button or to do a small pull request to to release a Docker image on the tag. But this is more important to ensure that we can actually automate that test. And then, if that works well, we can provide a first opinionated flavor up, uh, of uh, up-to-date Motic images. What do I mean by opinionated flavor? Um, that's like what is, what is uh, seen as, uh, as the best way forward within the community to host a Motic. For example, that means uh, Apache with PHP FPM or with uh, MariaDB or MySQL, like the opinionated version of how you want to host it. Because there will always be different opinions. There will always be different use cases, and and there is no wrong and uh, there is definitely wrong in how to <laughs> how to use a Docker image. But uh, there there are multiple valid opinions there. So, I, but I think as a, as a community or as a uh, uh, from within the project, we need to ensure that we have a definite working way of working. And then if that works well, we can iterate over it and go go wild and, and support other other stacks that, that at this point seems uh, valuable. For example, the an, an Nginx way of working or like a fully, fully decoupled way, like with uh, how you can handle crumbs and have separate images or containers or, or, or use cases for different uh, tasks. So that's, in my opinion, where we should focus on, 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 uh, on the automation part. Um, oh, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> somehow, I don't know what happened, but there are some slides afterwards uh, there too that are not here. Well, anyhow, I don't have the slides, but I I, I, I can uh, elaborate further on that. And the other thing is is the whole composer flow and, and the release management, because um, and that's also uh, definitely with a blue hat on. Uh, on the whole uh, releasing of Motic and supporting Motic, I think we should move forward and ensuring after we have the Docker images there, uh, that we also move forward and, and uh, moving Motic and again, my personal opinion, moving Motic forward in a composer-only way of or prioritizing or, or, uh, or ensuring that people will actually use the composer way of, uh, of installing and, and, uh, and using Motic. Because, yeah, it, it's the best approach forward. It ensures that you can actually, you, you can be in control of what you install, what you need extra, what you want to change to Motic. Because any other or extra plugins, extra modules, like the marketplace is a good example for that. It's, it's a, it was a very good idea to ensure that the marketplace required your uh, project to be composerized because that's the only correct way to actually add something to uh, an ecosystem that exists, that there is like a list of dependencies that are defined, the composer ensures there's a defined list of what version of which external dependency is actually, uh, is actually uh, used. 
and that's that's in my opinion the, really important to to move on that process uh, after Motic Five is out, and that I will come uh, come to in a bit. So um, the com the composer the composer uh, moving uh, the project forward in a composer way is really in my opinion really important. Um, for stability, for security, for giving people the correct approach uh, uh, on adding or patching Motic, because to be fair, I think um, uh, there are no numbers for that, but there will definitely be be organizations that are using uh, or that have customizations to Motic for their specific internal needs or to uh, to have new features. They always can contribute to the Motic community if uh, if that's possible. Uh, but anyhow, then the composer also makes sense. Um, and I was going to say something else about that. Uh, um, yeah, I forgot. I, maybe it will pop up in a bit. So yeah, that's uh, that's in my opinion the two focus point, uh, points. Uh, ah, yeah, I know what I was going to say. But of course, and that's also uh, important and also highlighted already a uh, uh, few times. At this point, the Motic Five. If you update, uh, sorry, if you update Motic Four with Composer, you have some quirks there, like for for example, your local PHP file is gone, and so on, and so other uh, annoying things that if you don't have a backup or don't know the process up front, you could break your uh, Motic installation. And this is obviously not good. This is something we need to tackle. We need to tackle this. It can be by documentation, can be by preventing it from happening. There are some concepts already in place in Motic that actually allow you to do it in a way that there is uh, a separation of uh, a separation in, in, in file structure to ensure that your own local uh, media files, your own local setting files or configuration files are not uh, thrown away when you update Motic. So, so that's something we need to actually focus on also on on uh, documenting and, and uh, moving forward. Um, yeah. OK, uh, let's go forward then. All right, so this is basically the previous things was uh, what, what could help us forward to make everything work smoother together, remove manual tasks, and so on. But of course, there is, there is still some other thing. Uh, while you can automate a lot, while you can, uh, while you can uh, improve a lot and make Motic also feature-wise better and better and better, at some point, you need to have a release. You need to have some point where you say, OK, at this point, we will actually make a release. And this is the goal of the release. And this is something challenging. Because I, 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 uh, that's, uh, I don't know what the blue hat is here. That's not per se a blue hat slide here. Um, but I have a lot of, uh, I've, I've heard a lot of questions and or seen a lot of questions in Slack and uh, on the forums and so on. Why will Motec 5 be released? Well, when is finally that big release there of Motec 5? And uh, and also it's like, that's, that will be a future question. Why can't my feature that I, I have been working on for for months now or, or the pull request is home for months, why can't it be added to, to Motec 5? Why, have, why do I have to wait for Motic 6? And this is something really important that that's maybe needs some more explanation or understanding uh, from, uh, from a point of view of maintaining the application, of maintaining an ecosystem. Because first, I'm going gonna to read the whole slide. Uh, but there are different stages in releasing uh, a product uh, or a version of a product. So you have the alpha, beta, RC, and stable release, where as, long, as further as you go, as less as uh, more defined the actual scope is, the actual uh, expected result, and the less bugs there are in. Where are we now? We are pre this uh, this release. We don't have an alpha release yet of Motic 5. Um, so, um, but let me first, and that's, this is definitely a blue hat slide. Uh, what is, because before you can actually say what is actually the, the when, when can you release an alpha, beta, release candidate or stable, you need to know the scope why are you releasing a version? Why, why is Motic 5 there? And this is my personal opinion. In my opinion, from a technical point of view, Motic 5 is a maintenance release. It means, means it ensures that we can move forward with focusing on, uh, on uh, removing or ensuring that we uh, removing deprecated code or old code or un unsupported code, like security issues, uh, not precise security issues, but li out of date libraries or unsupported libraries. Uh, like, for example, Symphony. We had to move move from Symphony 4 to Symphony 5, because otherwise, uh, in, the, in the life cycle of Motic 5, suddenly we wouldn't have support anymore for the main framework that we used to to, uh, to build a Motic upon. That's, that's really a bad idea. The same with PHP. We have to ensure that we are supporting PHP 8.1, because otherwise, that would mean that by uh, uh, end of November this year, 
we would have to be, we would have to release Motec six because Motec uh, sorry PHP eight point zero supports uh, would be gone and yeah there would be no security support anymore for the main language that Motec is using. That that's that's you can't you can't do that from a technical point of view. Of course, from user point of view and from if you purely look at features in in, Mo, in, in Motec, then you can say yeah why why do I bother yeah but. Yeah, that you you should not bother. You don't have. To, I agree that if you don't bother about the the uh, the actual change that is needed, but it's needed to keep the the, the project uh, healthy and to ensure that the product releases can be stable. Um, and in my opinion, also what happens and why because the in, in this case what I said the scope was not it was not per se defined on or not clearly or not per se clearly. Uh, um, um, understood by everybody or I don't know how to say it correctly it's, I don't mean it that way um, but there was there was a constant focus on new features and that's cool that's really cool I, I that, and, and there's of course the the, the, the momentum and the, the, the going forward in the product but that means that the symphony 5 or the PHP 8.1 were not per se the focus points on people uh, or they could not per se focus on those tasks because other tasks are there too for those new features and that's a little bit the balance that you definitely need to to find better as a community, to ensure that if the goal is clear of a release and the why is clear of a release, that we that we can focus on uh, on the actual tasks uh, that needs to be done, because that that means that we actually can release faster. This sounds strange, but by limiting the scope and by ensuring that we focus correctly and not adding extra new feature, we will release faster, and your new feature will land faster into Motic than it will be right now. And that's yeah, definitely my uh, my my personal opinion, but I. I hope I can I can keep uh, explain that to people that and, and get an agreement in the community that it makes sense because that also means uh, let me see if I add that slide uh, yeah so that also means what what are we actually still focusing on so I already mentioned that uh, Symphony five but I didn't mention it here because it ha has been merged a long time ago but at this point PHP one support has been merged in so at this point. Uh, the bare minimum to support Motic, uh, uh, sorry, PHP 8.1, which means we don't have anything, uh, any dependency anymore that uh, wouldn't allow us uh, to use PHP 8.1 is there. That's really cool. That's really cool. That's really needed. That's that's. Uh, there are still some quirks and still some things we can fix in the next uh, in the next uh, weeks and months. But that's really cool. Another thing is to replace a really uh, and I copy pasted something of a the the outcome of a, a community uh, meeting we had about this. Um, is replacing one of the libraries to send out emails uh, with uh, the newer version. And yeah, <laughs> that Motic be a tool to one of the things it does is sending out emails is the main one of the main features. We really need to take care of that part. We really need to ensure that it's stable and secure and so on. And another thing is that we need to do before we can or before we have a stable release is actually the upgrade part and documentation. Because at this point, if you would say, okay, I have a Motic 4, and I, for example, you do it with Composer, you have a Composerized installation of, uh, of Motic. And you say, okay, we'll switch to the recommended branch, or recommended uh, Motic uh, five branch, and you try to update. It still will, it still will fail. We still need to do a lot of work there to ensure that it's the steps are documented, the steps are clear, the issues that we can solve can be solved uh, automatically, and so. On. So, this is the most important thing that's uh, blocking us to release. And I had a, a chat this morning with Ruth, and I think she will, uh, uh, or already has. Uh, uh, talked about uh, the release schedule, so I won't go into depth into that. Uh, uh, definitely, there will be more information uh, during the this uh, this conference about that. Um, and then, also important, for example, let's say uh, uh, let's say we 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 tag alpha release today. What does that mean? What does that mean? That from this point on, as a, again a copy of the the community meeting we had. That means that all new features that currently exist will have to move forward to 5.1, uh, the, the lead, uh, yeah, at least 5.1. If it's actually a backwards compatible change that like requires to change uh, a, a technical aspect of the Motic uh, project, then it even can have to wait for Motic 6. This is really, really important because if you don't have this, this, this strict this distinction about between versions and when something can land and when not, you can never release because it's like a never-ending story, like of adding new features, and that that doesn't help. Uh, in, that doesn't help in releasing something fast. So that's why this is the importance of tagging an, an alpha release. That we really have that point in time. Okay, this is the marker, and from here on, we focus on releasing. And the only thing that we do 
basically is ensuring that we go through all these stages that are here and we ensure that we get the bugs, we get the user feedback, we get people testing it, we get people doing a, a test upgrade and so on. That we focus on that to ensure that it's moved forward, that, uh, that, that we actually get to a release, basically. Okay. All right. Um, and then I already hopefully covered this. I didn't make any slides for this. Um, but yeah, Bar, what's the what's the challenge? What are the challenges that I see? And this again with a, a blue hat on and the, the future of uh, the, the future tasks to focus on. Like already mentioned, it's the, in my opinion, switching to a composer, composer flow, composer flow only. And that doesn't mean you won't be able uh, to use Motic yourself in the way you want. No, it means that there is a specific preferred way of installing Motic. And if you really want to download the tarball, yeah, that's no issue, but it's, you shouldn't choose that as a first option. Another thing that comes into mind related to that is, but yeah, how do hosting providers be able then to host Motic if they know have a full system or a full uh, ecosystem built around uh, downloading the tarball? Yeah, I, and that and there, my opinion is also yeah, we have several options there. You can use switch to Docker or containerized way, uh, not per se Docker, but more containerized, because this is, in my opinion, also the way forward to ensure that you you can actually use Motic in a very scalable and 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 uh, and performant way that you can dedicate resources on points in time where it's actually needed during sending emails and not have all resources there ready to to yeah sleeping during uh, the uh, eight hours of a day so that's that's something else and I think that also something that we as a community should then focus on on explaining to like uh, hosting providers or, or help them out on how to set it up because it's not only for hosting providers it's also for the uh, 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 DevOps engineer or a marketeer actually even that's wants to install Motic uh, for themselves to test it out. Because if I'm, in my opinion, installing Motic, uh, installing Motic and having like 17 commands you need to do to un unzip and untar and then update and do some other things and have and some at some point be in a broken state, it's way more easy to do that if you have like already everything there in a compo and in a um, dockerized uh, image. I'm uh, sorry, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a yeah, container image that is there already packaged, then do it all the steps manually. So I think it's even, even though it looks like more technical or the, the, the up step can be more technical, it, I really uh, think that's a good idea to uh, move in that way. Yeah. So yeah, but I want to keep some room for questions. So I, uh, I'm gonna maybe answer that in the um, uh, in a bit. So I already see a question, I will answer that in a bit. Uh, so, but how can you help actually? So. As this is a technical session, I assume some of you people here are technical, which is really cool. But please, 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 you definitely can help. We can do this with the the the. We can we can keep doing this at the, this the space and the, the speed that we have, which is good. But the motor community can definitely still grow, both on a technical and and, and marketeer level and our user facing level. That's really cool. So please join the Friday sprints. There is a lot of tasks to do there. You can focus on. Uh, at, at this stage, it's more like focusing on, on what needs to be done for Motic 5, but other times it can be uh, new features, testing out, te really user testing, like testing if a feature actually makes sense. Also like code-wise testing if this is a good practice uh, in, 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 in the current uh, ecosystem, but also like for the, the, the Docker uh, or the, the container images um, approach. Yeah, that definitely. If, if you have experience or you're, you have been hosting uh, day in, day out uh, Motec via Docker images, yeah, sure, you can chime in. You look at the issue queue, you look in the product channel or the, the, the dedicated Docker channel. Um, yeah. And also, if you have like tackled hard problems, you can chime in, uh, um, give your ideas on, on how to tackle things. So you definitely can help. It's not only to the people now focusing on getting Motec 5 released, but definitely you also can help there. So, yes. So yeah, that was actually it, what I have right now, uh, what I wanted to, from my point of view, talk about. So if you have any questions, I will, we have some uh, 10 minutes left to ask some questions. And also, if you want to pass by the booth, go ahead. We are here. I can uh, jump in a call with uh, people uh, at the booth from uh, DropSalt. So yes, I see uh, if it's OK, Ulotubi, I will. I can pick the, or I don't know how you want to do this. You want to? Go over it yourself, or do I pick the question I see right now and then let people uh, further chime in there? All right, all right. Thank you so much, uh, Matthias. Um, that was really um, 
a good presentation. Okay. And um, <laughs> I remember we discussed earlier that you might spend more than that time, but you're able to finish up within time. All right. Thank you. So we are into question and answer now. And um, we have a question from Jasin, J. Lassin. Um, he's asking, will you recommend, like as an open source community, to migrate the repo from Microsoft GitHub to something that has an open governance standard and an open future like GitLab? Yeah, that's a very valid question. Um... That's a very valid question. Um, I can only speak for my personal opinion here. I would, I would also recommend that way. Uh, I, I think if it makes sense that the feature set is the same and the ecosystem and the governance around it allows it to have the same features in the same way, and we you can move to uh, more open uh, uh, governance, which is GitLab indeed, or maybe next year or next week, some other tool pops up. Doesn't really matter. But I, I think it's indeed a valid discussion we need to keep in our head. To keep in our head to ensure that if it at some point it's, it seems like feasible or doable to and it makes sense uh, as a community to move forward then i definitely yeah but like for example uh we at drop Salt also uh host on the on gitlab and the whole gitlab ci, CI pipelines to use our whole process so it definitely works really well for web applications like uh, like motic or yeah any other and there so yeah i and from a personal point of view i would i would also like that change but i think there are hotter fires to uh, to tackle right now, uh, than uh, than uh, moving to from one uh, Git provider to another. Simply, does this answer your question? Uh, yeah, I don't think you can you can say something. So I think it's tackled. If not, uh, add a new question. So yeah, perfect. <laughs> All right, then a question from Jan. Okay, Jan is asking: Should we fix the folder structure and the issue with delete local.php for composer upgrades before Motic Five is released? Um, this is, uh, I think it's more, it's about a personal opinion as I also going to really go for that. Yes, we definitely do. Because the, uh, in a, from one point of view, it's, it's a very, it's not a difficult change to do. And it's, it can be a combination of fixing some parts and documentation, but definitely we should, we, there should be no trap there in updating Motic and running a command and suddenly your Motic is gone and you have no idea why. At least that, at least that part. So we, I think we should, uh, Jan, and we should add it to the list. Uh, but we can do that uh, in one of the other stages uh, afterwards. Like it doesn't block us from releasing an alpha. If we, if people run into issues, we can start actually the issue. Or we reopen the issue. I have uh, have it somewhere. Uh, a stale pull request to actually focus on that. Um, so yes. All right. Perfect. Okay. So. Um... Okay, we have one other question. So Amos is asking, what plans are there for integrating AI? Okay, so just quickly, um, Matthias, before you speak on that, I, I wouldn't know if you uh, if you joined the track two session earlier today. So Jan did a presentation about integrating AI with Maltic that help you to build um, email templates. Um, also compose emails and um, also having the roadmap for building landing pages and some other things. You might want to also check it out, but but then I, I don't know if Mata has some more something to say about this. Yeah, I I, I also I personally didn't see the session, but I I also think the first thing that comes into mind is helping out uh, with uh, composing emails or the whole yeah uh, ensuring that you don't you can focus on actually. Uh, building the campaigns around it and not per se the, the content. I think that's a good, that could be a good plan because, for example, uh, CK editor or other editors are already experimenting with that, with having a bridge uh, or like having a, an, a way of ensuring that you have auto completion or you give some keywords and it spits out uh, a text that you can use and, and rework. But of course, and this is both a personal opinion and uh, <laughs> I think a good practice in general. Always with, uh, with AI tooling and chat GPT like uh, functionality. Be aware of what you have, what you put in the system, and be aware or be really uh, check really well what actually comes out of it. That, it, that you agree with it, that it makes sense in the context that you have. But I think for otherwise, I think there are other AI capabilities that could be could be used. Uh, for example, setting up really complex campaigns that it actually that there is some way. And I'm just talking future and just uh, an ID uh, spitting an ID. Uh, it's it's more like. Uh, you have a very uh, complex campaign that involves a lot of manual clicking tasks that you actually can 
explain it to the to an AI system, a, a bot that actually can do that for you and configure the whole setup for you. That's something I see. I don't think there are uh, really the tangible uh, IDs at this point, but I think if you have an ID and you want to look at it, I think the forums are the correct place to discuss it and, and start some kind of discussion there to check or like a, an, an ID on how other people see that. And maybe it can even then result in some uh, feature implementation in, in, in the project. So yes. Okay, perfect. Great, 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 great. Thank you so much for that. So just one last question for me um, is about Motic 5 release. Okay, um, I do follow up with the conversation going in the team, with the product team channel. And um, I know the alpha release should be out anytime soon. So um, maybe you want to share more about that for people to know because uh, a couple of times being the marketing department, we try to push out a release saying, oh, we are sorry, we have extended the date, and this is what's happening. Maybe you might want to talk more about getting people to contribute into Multic 5 and um, tell more about what caused the delay. And now that we are approaching alpha release, and how soon should they be expecting it? Yeah, I I, I already quickly, uh, briefly highlighted in the, the talk. I think the main, main reason why it's... Um, Took longer than expected is both that Motic community is not like a community of hundred thousands of developers like the Drupal community is. So there's and and also because in my opinion the Motic release was focusing on technical and for uh, Motic Five is for a technical reason there and of course there are new features that will be also uh, enabled there. It, it is challenging to work on those features because basically one like for example switching from Symphony Four to Symphony Five. Literally 50% of the code base was changed, and it just has so much impact. And it takes a, it takes a lot of time, and if you then combine it with uh, not the largest community in the world, then yeah, you, you can imagine. But I think I think I think we should have, and that's and that's of course it's always easy talking uh, after uh, after a year, or a year later. We could have been more clear on the goal of Motic Five to also ensure that everybody around it or working on uh, on Motic features was actually aware of the goal. That we could focus because then it could have been already released simply said but of course it's very easy to say that right now because uh, but we know we we're indeed in the final stages so i think indeed it will be in the next days weeks that we actually can uh, can tag that alpha have that marker in the ground on what's going on from this point on that we really focus on only that release to ensure that the bugs are out that we explain to people how to test it that there's no great part is needed or documentation if needed so yeah and i think i discussed i uh, had a chat with Ruth this morning. I'm not sure where or why, where and over in which calls you want to do discuss that. Uh, but there is, I think we, there will be some more information about that uh, during the conferences. All right, great. Thank you so much, um, Mataz. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. Thank you so much, Mataz, for this. Um, and I believe a lot of things have been clear now about the product. Multi. So, um, in case you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to Mataz on um, in yes. the lounge. You'll be there to answer you and um, also to interact more with you. Uh, okay, thank you so much, everybody, for joining this session. I'll be signing off from this particular track for today. So, um, other another person will be taking up later in the day. And um, do enjoy the rest of the conference and bye for now. All right. See you later. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.